Hey, this is Jersey. You're listening to the Garden State. You are listening to the Garden State, the only New Jersey podcast that gives you all the news you need to hear this week. My name is Josh Sobo. My name is Josh Chomick. And back like always, behind the camera, the man himself, Mr. Jimmy Parks. Yay. Jimmy. We should throw a sound effect in there of children going, yay. I read it. Yeah, I got it. Thank you. It's crazy, dude. And we got, wait, we have a special guest today. Oh, yeah. In the middle of our booth today, we call it the booth. It's just a table. It's an Ikea table. But in the middle of the booth today, we have Lady Liberty joining us. Jersey's finest. Can we get some audience applause for her as well? Yeah. Gotcha. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. It's just amazing. I know we're going to get hate in the TikTok comments. Like, why is the New Jersey podcast have Lady Liberty, the Statue of Liberty, on your desk? It's because... Technically, the Statue of Liberty belongs to New Jersey. You can look it up. Read the Wikipedia page. New York is just, you know, being New York. Doesn't, but New York, we, we talked about this, but New York actually claims her now, right? Uh, or thought, is she Jersey no, 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 we territory? Went, we went to court and won. When? In uh, the we, 90s. Yeah, a long time oh, ago. Oh, so she's ours. Yeah, it's official. Ellis Island yeah. is New Jersey. Uh, part of Ellis Island. The part <laughs> of Ellis Island where the building is, is ours. If you look on the map, it's really crazy. But Lady Liberty lines. is in the Jersey portion. But, Ellis Island and Liberty Island are two different islands. So wait, she's not on Ellis Island. No, she's wait, on Liberty one? Island. Where's Ellis Island? It's next to Liberty Island. It's not one. I thought they're one big island right there. No, you know when you go to Liberty State Park, there's that bridge that takes you to Ellis Island. Oh, and then Liberty Island is to the right of that. Liberty. Oh my gosh! Today I learned. That's. Oh wait, I'm getting my my islands confused right now. Wait a second. So Jimmy, correct me. Am I wrong on this? So the Statue of Liberty is in New Jersey territory. It is. Ellis Island is. Wait, are you? Hold on. Guys, we can't be spreading misinformation on this podcast. No, 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 no. no. Statue of Liberty. <laughs> it was added to New Jersey. Uh, the New Jersey Register of Historic Places in 1971. It was made a New York designa- designated landmark in 1976. So if you look at the, the line, wow, the state I'm looking line, right now. Yeah, it's... It's firmly in New Jersey waters. But New York but played some games. So we're just going to put our foot down and say the Statue of Liberty is ours. So legally, she's not. But, no, legally, the but Statue, that, that ours. Part of you Ellis guys have Island been lying to ours. me. All, but I thought she's on Liberty Island, not Ellis Island, Jimmy. Oh, yes, but I'm talking about Ellis Island now because part of Ellis Island is ours. But we're talking about La- Statue of Liberty. I know, but you know, you have to. What? So if you look at the state line, this is why it's some fugazi. If you look at the state lines, the Statue of Liberty Liberty is far west of the border between New York and New Jersey. So it's in our water. But New York tried to play some game where it belongs to them. What's the address say? It's the address is I don't think there is an address. How are you gonna just do that? Just click on directions. <laughs> What's the street the address? It's gonna be New York, New York, one zero 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 four. But the point that's we're so making, messed up. It's ours, though. It's in our water. It, so. Bro, I'm going by the state lines. She's ours. Yeah, well, we're, we're claiming her. Well, welcome back to the podcast this week. It's good to be back. It's good to uh, be in this brand new studio space. Do you guys want to fill them in on? Yeah, we, we actually we moved. We've been talking about it for the past few weeks because Josh and his wife are having a baby. Yeah. And, you know, they're prepping the house. We had a. It's kind of hectic every week, just tearing apart your living room. So we want to respect Shelby. And we came over to my place. Yeah, we had a little baby shower this past weekend, and up in the great township of Denville, if you're from nice. Morris County, shout out to Den- the Denville, shout out to Denville Dairy, been there once or twice. North Jersey. Yeah, that's that's North J. Oh, yeah. Um, and we got a ton of stuff, and we Best were kind of like, got. it's about time the podcast moves to the apartment. So you did a good job painting this wall behind me, by the way. Oh, uh, yeah, I got you. I looks put in some fit. work. Yeah, it looks very nice, and... Yeah, it's good to be in a new studio space. It feels a lot more laid back in here, let's just say. I don't even know how I feel. It's kind of nice because, like, it's all my gears at my house. So, like, mm-hmm. I don't have to keep moving into your house. But, like, at the same time, there's something about your living room. Yeah. I don't know if it's the fireplace that's never on or if it's, like, <laughs> I don't know, the surfboard in the corner, the, the ladder behind us. We don't have a hmm. ladder, dude. Yeah, the ladder's Or gone. is it the angle? I think it's all about the angle. Good point, Jimmy. It's the feng shui. Well, with this yeah. angle, Jimmy doesn't see my face. Yeah, I so. do not see your face. It's great. I only see you Josh only- Sobo. <laughs> and you can't see me. You just see the wolf behind me. Yeah, there is a wolf That's behind Jimmy, which is cool. Symbolic. Oh, yeah. Jimmy's the wolf. He's the wolf of the podcast. That's <laughs> Well, like it's good to be in a new studio. It feels like a whole new um, fresh start for this podcast. Ironically, 
on our 52nd week consecutive of posting a podcast. So this is our one year Annie. That's so crazy. And we're in a new studio. Not the studio we were hoping for all year when we talked about getting a studio. We're still a baby podcast. We're though. still, yeah. We we're only, not even walking yet, dude. We only have 230,000 listeners a week, which is small. And oh. we're not Joe Rogan or anybody yet. That, we're not. That might be a little off. I don't think. If you divide it, though, and then by a hundred, you're getting close. I, I just don't. I don't know, guys. The numbers aren't adding up for me right now. All right. Well, we'll, we'll just leave it at that. Before we get into any of the news or any of the interesting info we got to talk about this week, boys, what did you do this weekend? Uh, me and Chomik took a trip together. Uh, we were in... S- just the two of you? No. We were with like 10 other people as well. Yeah, we were in San Diego. We went to a horse show. What is it called? An equestrian yeah, show? an equestrian show. Have you ever been to an equestrian San show? San Diego. San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what San, San Diego means? Uh, wait, 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 wait. What does it mean? I, you know... I'll, We'll talk about it later, John. Okay. <laughs> but uh, have you ever been to an equestrian show? Is that what it's called, Jimmy? Yeah, it was an equestrian show. An equ- have you been to an equestrian show? No, I know what an equestri- equestrian show is, but I've never been to one. Dude, I felt so fancy, like mad bougie. Event. Really? Yeah, it was a horse show where horses are jumping over like uh, poles Jumps. and stuff, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's kind of wild to see in person because like these, the hurdles. these people are making these horses jump high. Like yeah. how high, you would say like five feet? Yeah, at least. At least five feet. It was pretty crazy. It's not that impressive. I'm not gonna lie, Josh. You no, no, no. know, with a running start, I could dive over a five foot post. No, yeah, with a with, with a, a with a 300 pound horse underneath you. I don't think so. You know how hard that is. There was underneath? some horse. Wait, 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 horses underneath? weigh way more than 300 yeah, pounds. Yeah, I couldn't think about the number that quickly. Wait, why would a horse be underneath me? You're riding a horse, brother. No, you mean on top of me. A horse is below you. <laughs> I'm saying I personally could jump over a five foot post, my dude. Yeah, but you're That's not what a I'm horse. saying. Yeah, but I'm saying add a horse to the mix, it's a little harder. On my back? Bro, there was one rider who the horse just the horse decided not to jump. It railed. <laughs> it rammed through the poles, bro. That's dangerous. And yeah. the, bro, the owner was so pissed, the horse. Like you could tell, like the he horse was, them. the horse was like shaking his head afterwards. We're like, oh my gosh, that horse is going to the slaughter or something. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. They don't do that with horses. Anyway, maybe I don't know. Chill, make the average horse weighs 930 pounds. Okay. Yeah, I was like off by three, so I was close. Six, but yeah, we 100. were there. We were there for um, a show we were doing uh, with our <laughs> friends' bands, but um, it was at a horse show, so it was really cool. That it was, was a, it. Was wild. Sounds like a good time. I mean, any any opportunity to go to San Diego, San Diego, and then the craziest thing that happened to me this whole trip is, you know, I'm on the plane flying to San Diego, and all of a sudden I'm looking through Instagram <laughs> stories, and I saw that one of my best friends, Nicole Resitar, friend of the pod was in san diego too it was awesome <laughs> what was she doing your your friend jimmy Dude, randomly ran into his friend in san diego and then she ended up hanging out with us the whole weekend it was so it random. was awesome it was so much fun it's crazy so it's small world well i said to chomik when we were leaving i said we were only here for 24 hours but it felt like we were here for a week because we did so much yeah it was like a non-stop weekend that's good what did, you it, did it make you miss new jersey at all <laughs> no. yes San Diego is beautiful, but come on, it's not Jersey. Yeah, but we were there for a day. I know. I like quick trips, though. Like, yeah. these past, like, three weekends have been, like, quick trips, so. Did either of you fly from Terminal A? Uh, no, but I was about to say tomorrow I'm flying, and I'm on United, so I'm usually Terminal C. They put me in Terminal A, bro. Wow, I'm going to be in Terminal A at Newark Airport for the first time. You should film on our Instagram story up I, some updates of what yeah, it looks like. Yeah, I, I think I'll put something on the story. Maybe I'll make an edit or something. Okay. I hope something crazy happens to me. Chum Where are you going tomorrow? I'm going somewhere I'll tell you later, but I can't tell you right now. <laughs> Did I know about this? Yeah, I told you. But like, I can't say it on the pod. Man, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, go, yeah, you, cool. you travel every single weekend. And then next week I'm traveling, but then I'm done for a little bit. So that's good. Like, uh. it's been a crazy, it's been a crazy four months. But you know, guys, someone on the podcast here has to make some money. And hmm. I stepped up and I was like, you know what? I'll travel. I'll travel for a living. Nice. And you know, it's been good. That's so nice of you, Cho. I appreciate it. You travel for a living. Are you a flight attendant now? <laughs> I've actually thought about it, but I don't think I could fly that much. We should talk to our friend Eric about his times as a flight attendant <laughs> one time on this pod. He, he used to go out of Newark, right? Yeah. Yeah, maybe it'd be worth talking about. <laughs> Not really Jersey related. But yeah, let's uh, bring a pilot on them while we're at yeah, it. Yeah, let's see Wait, if we can Eric's get a, a pilot now. <laughs> no. Um, Josh, what did you do this weekend? Uh, well, like I said before, on Saturday we had the baby shower, so that was fun. What was like, the best gift you got? You have to pick one. We got a car seat for my sisters. It was pretty, it's up a baby, kind of like the Gucci of, you know, wow. Whoa. in the baby Wait, realm. what's the brand? Up a baby. Up a baby? Yeah, my <laughs> dude. Cool name. You start learning this stuff when up your wife gets pregnant. 
It's a good one. It's it's not top tier, but it's it's definitely up there. It's definitely <laughs> if, uh, if someone from Up a Baby was listening and you know they were like, oh, we want to you know give you know, Josh Sobo and his wife a gift. What would you actually no, ask no, no, for? No, no, no. Actually, I want to give a shout out to our listeners and I want to see if we could start a diaper drive for my family. For your family. Where our listeners can mail diapers to our P.O. box. That, oh, That's my. incredible. Because I found out. Isn't they so expensive? They're very expensive, and I'm sure shipping them would be more. But if you could just order them on Amazon <laughs> and ship them to my P.O. box. That'd be so funny, bro. Dude, the, the post office would be, like, annoyed with us, but it would make <laughs> okay, my life. I got an idea. Okay, so, guys, this is hilarious because we, we want to help Josh, right? But how funny would it be if everyone was like, let me just buy one box of diapers. <laughs> and at the post office, just a mountain wait, of wait, diapers. Wait, wait. That'd be hilarious. Dude, we have a this lot of like listeners. A troll. Yeah, this what could be like I, a troll. What if I, we got, I got, like, a thousand boxes of diapers? Bro, that would be great for you. And also, it would okay. be hilarious. I got to ask my wife what kind of diapers we actually need because I know people are particular. How many different types of diapers are there? Um, like, are there's there, tons oh, of different brands. There's tons of different things going on like with organic diapers. organic diapers. I mean, we'll take anything, honestly. <laughs> Guys, send... Okay, our P.O. box is in our description. Go send a box of diapers to it. Are we it. doing this now? Yeah, sure. Tell people to just get, get us some diapers. Why not? Listen, I don't like handouts, but I'll take free diapers <laughs> from our listeners. <laughs> Uh, my wife is is kind of crunchy, so any of the organic kind of stuff, you know, toddler size, just mail it to the PO box. We'll, the Cran- the Cranford Post Office is going to be furious at no, us. None, but- like Jimmy, myself, we don't need anything. You know, we want you to get a mountain of diapers. <laughs> what do you mean we don't need anything? Because we want to provide our friend Josh with a mountain of diapers. Listen, mountain of diapers. If that's, we get any diapers, title. that would be the funniest thing ever. And I'd write have- a cool note on it, like why you like yeah. the podcast. She'd be so happy. Like, personalize the diaper. You know what? I listen after all the times we've made her, we've locked her in the bedroom while we recorded the podcast. <laughs> I, I don't say it like that, but <laughs> she, <laughs> locked much. Her, she locked herself in the bedroom. We quarantine her in there, make her watch Bachelor while we record. We invited her to sit and watch us. Well, you think she wants to listen to us? I, people on pod, the podcast app barely want to listen. She did admit that one week. She's like, I kind of do like listening to you guys talk. Like, she gets the podcast before anyone else does. Yeah. And she gets all the uncut. She gets yeah. the uncut version. Yeah. Yeah, sounds pretty cool. Wait, so Josh, educate me a little bit. How much does a pack of diapers cost? I have no idea. Let's see. Uh, let's get, let me get an, a, a price right now. Pack of diapers, because I guess you go different sizes. I mean, the big old Pampers box, you're looking at 35 bucks. Huggies, <laughs> 140, 52 bones at Walmart. That's crazy. What was like the price like 10 years ago? I don't know, but you know, babies, little babies, toddlers, you got to change them a lot. Yeah, you do. Yeah, oh my gosh. I mean, any baby gifts. I mean, really, since we're on the topic of giving me free stuff, no, anything you want to mail my family. As nah, long as send not- them the pack of diapers. It's even funnier. Diapers, the diaper drive. <laughs> <laughs> the Sobo the Subo diaper drive 2023. I Can love that. Can that be the name of the episode? <laughs> yeah. What? Can that be the name of the episode? What? I should sit the on Josh a... The f- Josh diaper drive? For the cure. For the cure. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, so we had a so back to the the question. I, I we had a little baby shower on Saturday, and uh, Sunday was low key, nothing crazy, just uh, another weekend in the life in the Garden State. We we're about five weeks out from the baby's arrival. It's crazy, so, dude. It's so cool. I can't wait to hear the name. It's um the name. Yeah, because you 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 didn't release the baby name yet. I know what the name is. What do you, what is it? No, you don't. Yeah, I do. It's Priscilla. After Presley? Yeah. No. Good guess, though. Good guess just because. It's not close to the name. But are you taking? A, are you going to take off any, like, oh, like, a week off for vacation on the pod? Like, are you going to have a fill-in for that week? No. Unless the unless we deliver the day we record, then I won't be here. But if, the, if it's the next day, I'll be here. Heck yeah. What? That's commitment. I'll bring the baby. If too. I had a baby, I would be like, I'm out, guys. No, actually, I might have to call into the mailbag and give you guys an update <laughs> of my life and let you guys record that week. Get a fill-in for me you, that week. You hear the little baby in the background? So... I, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'd should. like to be here. So we'll have to see. Play it by ear. We'll, we'll def play it by ear. And um, it's all very exciting. It's very bizarre. I, I'm telling you guys. I mean, I haven't even seen the baby yet, and it's bizarre. I feel like when I see my own child, it's going to freak me out a little bit. Yeah. Like in a good way. In a good way. It's like, what in the world is even going on? I want next week's mailbag to be a parent. Can, if you're a parent, oh, yeah, we should call get- into the mailbag, and I want you guys to give Josh Sobo a piece of advice. I like I like parenting advice on being a dad, but and make it interesting. Like make it like good. Since you brought up the mailbag, shall we indulge? Shall we see who called in this week? Let's indulge. You've reached the Garden State mailbag. We can't come to the phone right now because I am currently changing a baby's Wah! diaper. Oh, Wah! leave a message and we'll call you back as soon as we can. Bye. 
What's up, fellas? It's Brian. Uh, Colin, because I am from Bergen County, and you guys never show love to North Jersey, mostly Central Jersey, and I get it, you guys are from there, but what are your favorite things from North Jersey? Look forward to hearing back. Talk to you later. I wow. That's the this. first time I've heard that we don't give love to North Jersey, bro. You know what's interesting? This is how we know Central Jersey truly exists, because South Jersey people hate this podcast, and the North Jersey people <laughs> hate this podcast. <laughs> South Jersey's like, you guys never talk about us. There's never any love. Now North Jersey's crying about it. All right, let's talk about Bergen County for a solid minute right now. Let's okay. talk about a few, five things we like in Bergen County. Uh, Stu Leonard's. Rutt's Hut. Great. Bur- uh, Garden State Plaza Mall. Why not? Hate it. It's... It's a decent mall. Okay. John Boy Pizza. Is that Bergen County? Yeah. John Boy's Pizza. Yeah. Oh my Where's gosh. Glen Rock. Glen Rock. Glen Rock. Rock. Uh, uh, Mountain Creek. Great. If you want to go snowboarding. You know. Wait. Mountain Creek's Bergen County. Oh, are we? Sorry. I'm talking. I thought North Jersey. We're talking Bergen only. My yeah. bad. Bergen Ber- County only. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, American Dream Mall, of course. Greatest well, we mall We can't just do malls. We got to do specific because <laughs> everybody sorry, knows the malls. I'm sorry. That's the first thing that came to mind. Um, hmm. Uh, kind of running out of things here. Well, because you do we want to make it open to North Jersey because he's talking about North Jersey? Oh, he asked for Bergen he County. He says though. he said uh, Central Jersey. Uh, uh, favorite things from okay. what are your favorite things from North Jersey? Okay, that's fair. So let's go. Yeah, f- so he's let's do open. ten things from North Jersey. Though. High Point Monument, great spot. Love it there. Let's go in a circle. So Jimmy just went. Now you go. I'd say this is way up, way out there near High Point, but I love. Um, oh. Wall pack in? Wall pack in. Thank oh, you. Oh, so good. Forgot about that. Um, John Boy Pizza in Glen Rock, New Jersey. Fantastic pizzeria. And the owner is amazing. I want to take uh, a moment here. Give a shout out. Oh, okay. <laughs> a shout out to... <laughs> what <are> you... <laughs> Started a sentence. That's no reason. I going got a with shout that. out. You know what? I was going to say something. I'm not going to say it. But, but since we're talking North Jersey, let's talk about Route 17. You know, you're driving up oh, Route 17. I thought we were talking about the things we like about Yeah, North I hate Jersey. Route 17. Yeah. I just want to mention it. <laughs> Jimmy, go. Your turn. We're going in circle here. The Come on, Hibernia fast. Hibernia Diner. Okay, next. Uh, and since we're still talking North Jersey, <laughs> I'm going to pull one out of left field and say... The Wellmont Theater in Montclair. Okay. okay. Um, I would say... Spent Ma- a lot of years of my life there. Mountain Creek, summer and winter. It's beautiful in the summer. Winter, you can go snowboarding on that fake snow. But hey, it's a mountain. So oh. it's beautiful. Oh, I know what I want to talk about. Yeah. The Dumont Crystal Diner Ooh. in Dumont, New Jersey. Dang, the ice- that place was so good. What, what They call him the Iceman of Dumont? Is yes. Ice Man of Dumont. Jimmy, your turn. Go. I think we're at like six. Um, uh, let me think here. Stoke State Forest. You guys are going like one specific area of North Jersey. I went from Glen Rock to Vernon. I went from about? Rockaway or Hibernia <laughs> yeah. to... You know, I have some friends from Allendale. They got a nice little <laughs> lake up there, a town lake. Okay. I spent a few Fourth of Julys there. If you live in that area, you probably know what I'm talking about. Mm. That's Bergen County. You know, North Jersey's great. And guess what? Like, I never thought that we were showing... Or that we weren't showing love to North Jersey. I feel like we do talk about North Jersey a lot. Wait. It's the it's Southerners who get mad at us because they're like, you don't talk about South Jersey, but we do. I got a good one. What's that little park next to the George Washington Bridge? We could, you, you know how everyone in San Francisco goes to that park next to the Golden Gate Bridge? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know We basically about. have the same thing in New Jersey and like nobody goes there. Yeah. It's a great view of the bridge as well. It's beautiful. You know, I love Edgewater. Yeah, Edgewater's nice. Uh, the whole like Palisades area is beautiful. Shout out to Hoboken for a second there. Yeah, Hoboken, no joking. That's right. So yeah, we love North Jersey. Yeah, I think I think we have a pretty good knowledge of all of North Jersey by now. Bergen County, I don't like going to Bergen County much. No offense to our Bergen County listeners, only because I feel like it's Union County with more traffic. It's the most populated county in the whole state. Makes sense. They and have you, about a million residents. And you can't go shopping on Sundays. The actual... I like that. I'm not going to lie. Keeps everyone at home, you know, with the fam. Yeah, just re- chill out for a day. You know what I just learned about today on Sundays that Jimmy just told me? No hunting. No, There's no hunting allowed in the state on Sundays. Yep. Really? Mm-hmm. I just learned that today. I had zero idea. Do people still do it, though, you think? Like, are people actually checking, Jimmy? Uh, yeah, they have game wardens, so, um, but I'm sure there's, like, poachers and stuff. I have one more thing from Bergen. Ca- I'm not from Bergen. From North Jersey, I want to shout out. The WMCA 570 radio building on the side of the turnpike. I don't think I know what 
building that is. You guys have never seen this on the side of the turnpike near the Meadowlands? I don't really know. No, As a I don't kid, so. I literally, it's, it's a radio, little radio they building. They still use it? You, if you're listening, you probably know what I'm talking about. If you've driven through this area, it's, it's a little radio building with a neon sign. As a kid, I always wanted to know if there was like a radio host inside of it. I think it's just like a, a, a you know, like a maintenance kind of shed. Oh, um, it's not used as a radio station but, anymore? I don't know, because you drive past and you would think like maybe, I don't know, maybe somebody's in there having an inter- interview. I don't know. But shout out to that little thing, the mystery of that. Pretty interesting. We should do some research for a story next week on that cool little spot. I've never seen that before. Would love to. You've just opened my eyes. Yeah, I don't remember that either. You guys, did you look it up? It's in the Meadowlands, you What's said? What's it called? WMCA 570. You guys 100%. We probably have. I just never like thought twice about it. Uh, let me see here. No, I do not. Wow, I, I stumped the stumpers. That's pretty exciting. Boys, we've talked quite a bit in this intro. Um, thank you to, uh, actually, thank you to Brian for the the phone call. Sorry we don't show enough love to North Jersey. Well, we have shown love to North Jersey. I don't know what Brian's talking about, but yeah, thank you for the call, Brian. Okay, let's yeah. keep moving. And if you want to call into the mailbag, the number is... One, two, three. 908 67 99 Oh, it's so easy to memorize now. Like we didn't, even, we didn't even prep that. 908-679-9993 or 908-67-9999. Call in. Give some parenting, parenting advice to Josh Sobo over here. He needs it bad. Yeah. He's about to have a kid. And um, I just want to say thank you to everyone who's been calling in. We have a whole list of like mailbags right now. Yep. And, you know, we're not going to... We're not just going to trash yours. We're going to get back to yours. Maybe like one day we'll do, I was thinking about this. Let's do a full episode just answering people's calls. Like you could easily That's go through like a whole episode with mailbag because every mailbag is so different. I, w- I really like that idea actually. Might as well one day. There's so many interesting topics. Yeah. Why don't we just do that? Because I don't want all these calls to go wasted. Like so many people call us, but we can only take one or two at a time a week. Have we missed any really good ones in the last few weeks? Because I know if you've called in and we haven't gotten to you, we're sorry about that. We, uh... Try to get to all of them, but sometimes it's just really hard. Well, let's do, I, I'm down to do an episode one day, just answering people's phone calls and we could let people know on Instagram, like, Hey, call in because this is going to be like a special week and yes. go through all of them. Why not? I love, I love it. it. I love it. I love it. So I love if it. you guys want to call in, you can also, before we get into the news, one final announcement today is groundhog day. I had no idea today is groundhog day, dude. I was going through stories and it popped up on my feet. I was like, today's groundhog. We were just talking about it the other yes, day. Yes, today is groundhog day. Do you guys know the results. Six more weeks of winter. Six more what? weeks no. of winter, dude. Okay. I met with the National Weather Service out of Mount Holly literally two days ago. I don't care. The gra- I don't care. The no, groundhog's no, no. all shadow. He said that it's going to be abnormally warm. Yeah, he does. He's wrong. The, gra- uh, the groundhog's yeah. always right. Groundhog's never right. I don't understand. Can you guys explain this? Because he could either just have six more weeks of winter, or what's the other option? Spring comes early. Yeah. Oh, well, clearly this is not a good system then, because <laughs> spring has already sprung in New Jersey, it feels like. Well, we've been celebrating Groundhog Day for the, our entire life. Like, why? Do, if it wasn't accurate, wouldn't they have canceled the holiday already? <sighs> Probably. Yeah, that's a good point. It is scientific. That is a good right. point. You know, it also was sunny this morning, so well, he, maybe that's why he saw a shadow. I don't know. But I don't. I have no idea how science works. You know, when we were driving through the woods this morning, I started noticing like things are starting to green up that normally don't green up until like April. Yeah, but then then he saw a shadow. So good thing we're getting a snowstorm soon. I don't know. But happy Groundhog Day, everybody! It's a big week. Yep. And our last point we want to talk about before we get into the news is the polar plunge. Yes. Yes. February twenty fifth. Twenty fifth. Am I saying it wrong? February twenty fifth. Why do I think it was the 24th? Am I, am I tripping? It's that Saturday. What's the Saturday, Jimmy, of Polar Plane? Yeah, well, I'm pulling it up right now. It seems like the official date is the 25th. Sorry, guys. I'm an idiot. So, you're not an idiot. You're Thanks, a good man. guy. Thanks. But yeah, February 25th, we're going to be plunging into Seaside Heights You know, for the New Jersey Special Olympics. Yes. If you guys want to make a donation, all proceeds go to the Special Olympics. We just decided to join in to this charity. This is our first ever fundraising event we're going to be a part of. And then from there on out, send us some charities. We'd like to raise money for other things. If you want to donate to our team, that also gives you... Oh, Josh, finish my sentence. That gives you the gives opportunity. You access, access to the ocean. Yes, it's like a, over. It's like 110 bucks. Like if you donate that, that means you could plunge with us and we could be like a whole team that plunges together. Yeah, <laughs> we could be fun. It's going to be a family all, outing right there. I think it's going to be great. And I think it's for a great cause. I've always wanted to do it, just never got around to it. 
It's going to be great. Jimmy Parks is officially wearing a Speedo, so That's just something crazy. to look forward to. Whoa, we Stop distorting your microphone. We, we didn't reach our fundraising goal. I was the... That's what you know what's crazy? Like, I just have control of Jimmy's mic. So, yeah, I'm stoked that he's good. <laughs> wow. Our first story of the night comes out of Atlantic City, New Jersey. The best place in the world. Yes. A safe haven amongst <laughs> <laughs> chaos. <laughs> yeah, sure. Two men were arrested in Atlantic City, New Jersey for running a cockfighting ring. Apparently, yeah. it's illegal in New Jersey. And in most places. <laughs> yeah, it's illegal in most places. In the States. <laughs> yeah, this is an interesting one. Two Atlantic County men, 81-year-old Sigfredo Perez of Newtonville <laughs> and 49-year-old Crielli Merlo. <laughs> His I'm names. Like, man, that, that sounded about white, didn't it? Of Hamilton have been arrested and now charged by the Atlantic County Prosecutor's Office with third-degree owning tra- and training live animals for the purpose of fighting offenses. So wow. an 81-year-old man still getting after it. He's probably been age. doing this for years. Where do they where do they do these in like their homes or like they have like no, a warehouse where like it's super secret where it's they have like definitely a, in the basement of like a warehouse somewhere. That's what it always is in the And what do people just show up? How does this sport work? Do they do people show up and just like bet on the certain like yes, chicken yeah. and they're like, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna bet on this guy to kill the other one. It's a big underground thing. Do they eat? Yeah, okay, so, that's crazy. The ACPO Humane Law Enforcement Unit and New Jersey State Police investigated the tip, went to the home, searched the property, and found dozens of roosters trained to fight, as well as equipment used to train roosters to fight. So, can you imagine, like, oh, wait. outside of the context of a, of, a, of a fight like this, training a rooster to fight, like, just, if you devoted your life to that, it's such a funny concept. Yeah. And- what is the equipment that you use to train a rooster? <laughs> a very small punching bag. <laughs> Just a miniature punching bag. The You're chickens, like, are, like the chickens I, are jacked. I'd probably walk by this equipment and have no idea what it's used for. That's can you type funny. in, can you search it on Google? How to train rooster to fight. <laughs> Cock, I'm gonna get, Cock fight training. <laughs> okay, here we go. Here's a video on list. YouTube. Uh, there's an ad playing. We're going to like get past this oh. ad and skip. Our podcast is Keep the flag. volume up. I'll control it. Oh, wow. <laughs> Fast forward to the equipment. <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on. This yeah, what is crazy. What right now? Uh, just two, two dudes, dudes talking about chickens. <laughs> in, a, in a different nation. <laughs> of roosters. I don't know. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, if anyone's got any intel about this sport, let us know. It's super interesting. I have no idea. Super illegal, but interesting nonetheless. Do you think they eat the chickens that die afterwards? No, probably like a, not. Maybe they have like a feast or something like that? No, I, I know they don't because the article said, um, in addition to that, investigators found more than 100 birds that were living in deplorable and wow. unsanitary conditions. Then it said the birds and roosters who survived, oh, it said some birds were found Dead or decaying. Oh, the birds disgusting. and roosters who survived are currently qu- in quarantine and will be tested for diseases. So, wow. Can I give a, like, a scalding hot take right now? On yeah, this? Please, yeah, sure. Please, please. <laughs> okay, so like, I think this is wrong. I'm going to start by saying that. Yeah, it's totally cool, bro. You could open up if you have like an, if you've done this before or anything like that. No, no, no. I've never done this before. I don't <laughs> condone it, okay? Like, I think it's wrong. But at the same time... These birds, like, I, does, does a rooster have a soul, man? <laughs> like, it's, I don't know. I'm, well, I do, ha- I have a pet bird, and, like, I wouldn't want to put it to, that's true. to a fight. Yeah, you know what? It's kind of like a dog. The apples really love it. I, mm, no. My bird is really precious, and I wouldn't want to see it die to oh, another that's bird. What I, that's what I said. It's really loving. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> I like how you say it. Did we ever tell the story of your bird and its gender transition on the yeah, podcast? The, dude, the bird jungle ripped me off 60 wait, wait, bucks. Wait, where's the bird jungle? What town is it? It in? was Shout in... Shout out to the bird jungle. It was down... Like Boundbrook? It was off the Red Bank exit. Like yeah. off like one... I'll what is that? 109 on the parkway or something, something like that? Like that. Uh, I think it closed down. Oh, it's in... It's in no, it's no, it, it closed York. down, Josh. There's another one. Now. Yeah, I think so. The bird jungle. Oh, Shrewsbury. 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 Angels bird jungle. Yeah. Well, let's find out why yeah. it closed down. What happened? Well, with yeah. You? Long story short, this chick Terrifying. sold me a parrot let. You know, and they're expensive because they're parrots, right? So I probably paid like a few hundred bucks for this bird. And anyway, I go back like a few months later to get the nails clipped because I still didn't want to. It was still so small and like I didn't want to clip the nails yet. I was scared, and then I was referring 
Oh, they sold it to me as a boy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because they say male birds are more expensive than girls. I go back there and I'm referring it to as a he, and they're like he. <laughs> so this is a this is a girl. Are you aware that you have a bird? I'm a girl, a female parrotlet. I'm like, oh my gosh, no! They said it was a boy when I bought it. I've been calling it a he the whole time. They're like, no, man, your bird's a girl. <laughs> and so they gave me sixty bucks back. It was the best gift ever. Store cred. Wow. So I got to buy snacks and like toys for the bird. It was like the best day ever. But at the same time, like, the, and I was like, why? I was like, does the girl? Like, what happened with the girl who sold it to me? And they're like, yeah, she got fired like a few <laughs> weeks later. She didn't really know what she was doing. She definitely pocketed the money. She, she definitely was, she did. Definitely, she ripped me off. They oh, said, you're yeah, so right. She didn't know what she was doing. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. She I knew exactly what anyway, she was doing. Anyway, my bird, uh, Applejack, recently turned 11 years old. So, no, she just turned 10 years old. So, That's you know, crazy. God bless her. You know, everything's been going great. And she's been a great friend to my grandma. So, well, <laughs> it's an amazing story, really. My it's grandma kind of- still calls it a he. I'm like, <laughs> Baba, it's a girl. <laughs> well, birds, you can't really tell. They kind of all just look. Like birds. Well, you can't say that. Really, no, it's it is sad though to have to have these turkeys fighting one another. I mean, <laughs> these, <laughs> these, roosters. These, roosters, me. <laughs> these roosters fighting one another. I wasn't trying to be you know insensitive yeah. before, but I don't know. I do, just think, do you think this is happening all over the state? Like people just haven't oh, been I'm caught. Sure, I think it, yes. There's, I mean, especially in city types of yep. areas, you hear roosters crowing in the morning. It's like, why is there a rooster in the middle of Elizabeth? Like, yeah. how do you think we can get into one? Like to. To do some research for the Wait, Garden State. If we did a kind of like not to like bet on undercover a like investigation. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean I was gonna say in the same way like Vice and all those channels do these documentary series, we should start doing New Jersey documentaries where we try to yeah. get inside the Elizabeth, New Jersey cockfighting ring and just <laughs> yeah, see sure. what's going on in there. I want to get into you, like the illegal drag racing things. Oh, like on the streets. Yeah, we yeah. Do that. There was a whole, there was a bunch of documentaries in like Newark, New Jersey about like. Yeah, uh, I actually watched that one. On I love that yeah. one. Amazing. Well, I don't really have any other thoughts on this besides the fact that the birds and roosters who survived are currently in yes. quarantine. Wow. Congratulations. They're going to be good. They're going to be good, bro. They're in quarantine and they're going to be tested for diseases. Which and then they're going to be COVID? sent off to get eaten probably or something. Yeah. You know, this is, this is, I guess that's why I'm having trouble taking this serious. I had literally today, I had turkey from Red, White, and Q on Route 22. So Amazing sh- spot. Shout out to Red, White, and Q. Veteran-owned and operated. Amazing location. Juiciest turkey sandwich ever. Dang. And turkey's a bird, my brother. Is a turkey a rooster, though? Or is every rooster a turkey? What do, what do you value more, a turkey or a rooster? I think a turkey's more valuable than a rooster. I don't know. Which well, one's more expensive? A turkey's turkey. a chicken. I mean, a rooster's a chicken. So not every chicken's a rooster, but every rooster's a chicken. Yes. <laughs> yes. But how about a turkey, though? A turkey is a different type of bird. It's a whole different uh, <laughs> species, my guy. So then why are you talking about turkeys when we're talking about chickens, Josh? Because it's a bird. It's a bird. So, we're, okay, we're just putting everything into the one but same category. I do want to say before we close that while roosters can be eaten, they're not commonly found in the marketplace. It's tough. normally just the hens. The meat, it's too tough. Jimmy, why you always got to make the most far out statements out That's of left field? I love it. It's such great information. The I learned so much from Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> I learned so much from Jimmy, Jimmy Parks. Where is this marketplace you refer to? <laughs> you know, Shoprite. Oh, uh, Shoprite. A and P. I, I want Shoprite Kings. to be a sponsor of the pod. All right, let's move on to this next story, guys. Um, yeah, shop. if you if that last story offended you, you know this might be the wrong podcast for you to listen to. But nonetheless, they're both under arrest. Uh, both Sigfredo and <laughs> Quilly. So funny. What's so funny? <laughs> oh, sorry. Jimmy, do you have something against turkeys? <laughs> <All right. laughs> it's I wouldn't be surprised if Jimmy's involved in one of these cockfighting rings. I really wouldn't. <laughs> He's he a little that type suspect. Of guy. He has been making a lot of money yeah, lately. That is true. That is true. All right. Well, this next story is even more bizarre than that last one. You guys heard what was going on in New Brunswick just this past week? <laughs> this is the craziest story. I found story out on the week. Garden State Instagram. In New Brunswick, New Jersey, a 29-year-old woman has been arrested after pretending to be a high school student. Can one of you say human trafficking? Human trafficking. Yeah, this is a weird one. Dude, and I'm so weird. Never in my life have I tried to sneak back into high school. Most of the time, I was trying to sneak out of high school when I was in <laughs> high school. But it's now crazy. this lady's 29. She wants to get back in. And now they're saying she was a Rutgers University grad. That's even more weird, bro. So what? she has her degree. So Something what was she doing in a high school? Enrolled as a freshman. Trying to get freshman girl numbers. 
So for four mm. days, a 29-year-old woman pretended to be a student at a New Jersey public high school. She attended classes, spent time in the guidance office, and collected phone numbers from teenagers who helped her find her way through the maze of hallways, according to the students and school official. She continued to text former classmates days after the ruse was discovered. Last week, students said the woman identified by the police as Haizhong Shin was arrested on Tuesday and charged with providing documents that falsified her age to officials at New Brunswick Public Schools, a district with nearly 10,000 students. So she really was forging documents so she could go to high school. Well, think about it. there's 10,000 students um, in that district. Dude, it's easy to blend in. And I guess nowadays it's that easy to sneak into a high school, which is crazy. Uh, yeah. But also, you know, it's 2023. It's super easy to forge a document and just get away with it. Listen to this. It says students told the New Brunswick Today reporter in a video posted to YouTube that Miss Shin had requested to meet at least some people she met at the location I'm sorry, at a location outside of school. Not good. good. One teenage girl who identified herself as Tatiana said that the night before the woman's arrest, she got a text from Miss Shin that left her feeling frightened for her safety. Wow. So, Do we know what the text was? Does it say? It doesn't say, but a lot of people are saying this might be a human trafficking thing. Yeah, like why else would you go into a school and try to befriend 14-year-old girls if you're 29 and, and meet them no at a sense. location, bro? That's super weird. It's definitely predatory in some way. Yeah, yeah, 100%. It smells really weird. But that's the thing. She's not even getting charged for any of that. I guess be, I, she didn't do anything. Like, it's all speculation, but... I think, right, they have to charge her with the initial charges, and then they do their investigation. They could add other charges on Yeah, there after. hasn't been anything... They're probably to built. prove her guilty right now, but maybe they're building a case out of Well, yeah. the one thing that can prove her guilty with is forging documents and Which, yeah, going into school. That's why she was charged. So, Yeah, they're probably building a case against her, and I, it's just so weird. The fact that she was a Rutgers grad, too. Like, Does it say yeah. what she graduated? What was her, what was her major? Um, it's very, very Somewhere creepy. in one of the articles. If you dig deep into it, you'll be able to find it. But nonetheless, very, very creepy situation in New Brunswick. Thank God she was caught. Here on the Garden State, we want to protect the children. Protect the children at all costs. Arrest the creepers straight to jail. Protect the kids from predators. It's crazy that she like went four days yeah. before getting caught. Can we send off our salute of the week to the New Brunswick Police Department? Yeah, sure. Our we, salute of the week. I we salute you guys. I don't know. It might have been. like we, I want to salute them, but also we got to give a hand to these kids. So a lot of these kids were creeped out, and they probably started like reporting this chick. Yeah. It's a, it was a group effort from the community. It for was sure. really cool. And yeah, good you job, know guys. This is great. I hope that she they prosecute her. And if she was trying to do something nefarious, I hope she goes to jail. Yeah. Hopefully she wasn't. You know, look at the bright side. Maybe she got a little confused. I don't <laughs> I don't maybe there's something mentally not there. I don't know. Well, I think to some extent there has to be something mentally not there. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad they got her, and it kind of makes you wonder how many people are in the public school system that aren't children. Got to keep your eyes open, guys. Hmm. Yeah, I'm sure this is not the first time something like this has happened. I wonder if people are getting away with it right now as we speak. I'm sure. Like, people have been enrolled for years and just haven't been caught. What? I'm trying to think about that one kid in my high school that just like looked way older mm. than everyone else, right? Well, yeah. kids just looked older in general when we were in high school. When I remember I seniors had like goatees. I can't, brother, I can't even grow a goatee. I'm 28. I had a friend who had a goatee in eighth grade, bro. Well, it was <laughs> the ridiculous. craziest thing ever. Maybe was, he was, no, I don't know. You know what? With everybody getting <laughs> so healthy and eating clean, like no weird chemicals, I'm starting to think those chemicals are doing us some good back in the day. <laughs> I don't think they're bad, dude. They're not all bad. Lucky Charms and Fruit Loops for breakfast, man. Sounds Put so a little hair man. on an eighth grader's chest. All right. That was a weird statement. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to enroll in a high school, I promise. All right, next story here. A massive resort is being proposed to be built in Dennis Township, New Jersey. A resort? Like Bahamas? Like what are we talking? Like, no, like a beach resort? This is a resort. This is a resort resort. Like a beach resort? So, sort of, but no. It's more of a wooded resort. Oh, ooh, like a ooh. mountainous resort. But well, listen, no mountains. No mountains. No, it's just what? Yeah. In a few years, travelers to New Jersey could have a new luxury vacation destination miles inland from the iconic shoreline. John Connors, the pro 
the project's developer and CEO of Brickstone Realty shared, everybody knows about the beach. <laughs> Great open line. <laughs> everybody. <laughs> it's, it's true. He's not like wrong. Beach. That's like a Trump line. Everybody knows about the beach. That's not a secret, but Cape May County is so much more than that. And, you know, we have lots of friends that come visit and, you know, they're beachgoers. This sounds literally like Donald Trump. <laughs> Why does he keep saying, you know? But they are also bikers and burger and beer lovers and wine tasting aficionados and all those things you can do in ab- abundance in Cape May County. That, lo- that whole paragraph was... Wa- Should I just cut it out? I w- I'm going to keep it because it like was interesting. It. Yeah, I'm, I like that, but I'm just saying for like... I just think he, that was a ridiculous line on his end. Yeah, he, he really was all over the place there. So tell us about the story. According to a proposal submitted to Dennis Township, the 120-unit first-class resort would be developed on a 30-acre of wooden, wooded and undeveloped land near the Route 83 uh, section that meets Route 9. Connor said the project is expected to cost about $65 million to develop and would include 56 guest rooms in a three-story main lodge. There's also room for f- uh, 40 one- and two-bedroom bungalows, 24 individual cabins, a tavern, and other amenities. If you look this up, can you, looks, show me, can you show me a photo, Josh? Well, let me read this last portion, and then we'll look up photos. So it says, the project is described in zoning documents as a woodland escape for mind, body, and spirit. Whoa. A sustainable connection to nature. That's no, one of those. And walking trails are proposed throughout the property in an effort to connect patrons and guests to the site's natural features. Wow. Gong. You play gong right there. Yeah, I'm gonna put like that like meditation music underneath your voice. We're gonna make that that could be the commercial for this um for this resort. We should have them pay us to like All right, do on. that. So if you look what at, town uh, is it in though? It's a like Cape May Dennis. It's yeah. Cape May County, but Dennis Township. Who knew we had a Dennis Township? I Today I learned. I did. J- Jimmy loves South Jersey. Jimmy's our South South Jersey. Those the renderings. Yeah, look how cool it looks. It looks that looks really straight out like North Jersey, but it's like. In the Pine Barrens. It looks like the coolest summer camp I've ever Are seen. Are these in my Pine life. Barrens, Jimmy? Um, I'm trying to figure out if Dennis Township's actually within the Pinelands. It National looks kind of south. It might be. No, but look, this is the. No, it's west. This Cape is the County. Pinelands National Reserve. I think Dennis is around here somewhere. Yeah. So I think it is technically part of it, which you have like development issues in the Pinelands. I guess it goes through in front of the Pinelands Council. So. It looks kind of like Bohemian Grove, not going to lie. It looks like a retirement community. It's a little bit sketch, but who knows what's going to go on down here. Maybe all of the New Yorkers that just need to get away from the noise. Honestly, I liked I, I liked it up until you gave that quote. You made it sound super weird, and I was like, this is kind of sus. Which part of the quote made you uncomfortable? Was it the walking trails, or You're, was it the mind, an body, and mind and body, and spirit? <laughs> it's soul. If it ever gets The Atlantis of New Jersey. Not the beach. They're doing so many projects like this right now. So they're building like the Venice of New Jersey in Atlantic City, and then like right around the corner, you got this. Well, is this actually happening? Like, are they making it already? They're talking about it's before the zoning board. It's probably going to go through. If it goes through, we should make a trip down and get some relaxation and stop at the Venice of uh, what is it called? Atlantic City. The Venice of Atlantic City on the way. Is that a, Did that happen already? Is that That's, still, that's like a big project. It's going to be like a 10-year development. Yeah. Oh, really? It's going to be a long time. Yeah, I guess if you want to dig a waterway through Atlantic City, it's not that easy. Yeah. I mean, would you want to take a trip down? Well, you said it was like Bohemian Grove, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if they start if they start lighting owls on fire, wooden <laughs> statues of owls, it <laughs> might be time to leave. Well, moving on to our next story. You know, one of my favorite shows ever is Seinfeld. Same. Wait, can we tell the listeners how me and you and your brother went to go to see the Seinfeld set in New York City a few years back? Yeah, when Hulu bought the rights to streaming Seinfeld. Yep. When I, This is probably, what, six years ago? No, longer no. than that, eight years ago? Yeah, probably eight, nine years ago. They set up Jerry Seinfeld's apartment in, in Chelsea, uh, Manhattan, and you could go in and you could take photos. And I did a Kramer entrance through the door. I busted through the door. And we met the soup Nazi. I forgot about that until right now. A lookalike though, right? No, that was him. It was actually that him. It was actually the soup Nazi. I didn't even realize that. Yeah, that, that was the soup Nazi. Wow. That's so cool. Yeah. Well, speaking of Seinfeld. Yeah, I'm over here in the corner just being like, I never watched Seinfeld. Uh, that's I don't right. know what these guys are talking about. New Jersey lawmakers are considering a new law called the Seinfeld Bill. 
I love it. I love it already. So do you guys want to know what the Seinfeld bill is all about? Sure. You ever watch the episode of Seinfeld where Jerry gets the call from the telemarketer? Yeah. And then he says, well, how about you give me your number and I'll call you at home. Wait, can we pause before I play it? Can you give me for, for the listeners and me who don't know Seinfeld? Give me a quick backstory. No, you'll it's just a it's just a, a joke. You'll get it. Oh, cool. Play it. I'm sorry. Excuse me one second. Hello. Hi. Would you be interested in switching over to TMI long distance service? Oh, gee, I, I can't talk right now. Why don't you give me your home number and I'll call you later? Uh, well, I'm sorry. We're not allowed to do that. Oh, I guess you don't want people calling you at home. No. Well, now you know how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> Classic Seinfeld. Yo, that's so good. <laughs> so the idea of this new law would be actually to make it a lot harder for telemarketers to call people in the great state of New Jersey. So basically tearing apart telemarketing businesses? In a way. So it says New Jersey lawmakers are considering a new bill targeting telemarketers inspired by the famous TV sitcom Seinfeld. The legislation would require telemarketers to identify themselves and what they are selling within the first 30 seconds of the call. The bill sponsor nicknamed it the Seinfeld bill because of the famous scene. And uh, it quoted Senator John Bramnick. It says, New Jerseyans should know who they're talking to on the phone and what's being sold to them by telemarketers. The other thing it's going to add is you you can only call people between um, or you can't call people between 9 p.m. and 8 a.m. So if a telemarketer wants to call you at 10 o'clock at night, I don't know if that's ever happened to me. Has it happened to you guys? No. Uh, No, but... Don't telemarketers already within the first 30 seconds say what they're like selling you? Like, I want to hang up immediately because I already know it's a telemarketer. I was just, just going to say, does anybody even answer the phone for telemarketers Does anyone anymore? even talk to them past 30 seconds I, as is? Like, I, I hang up by then. I think That's it's mostly point. like older people. That's who gets hooked in True. by these people. I think it's all just like elder scamming, honestly. It could be elder okay, scamming. Okay, so shoot a hole in my theory I'm about to say. Okay. Or shoot a hole in my proposition. Mm-hmm. Why don't we just make telemarketing illegal altogether? Why should you be allowed to just, you know, solicit random people's phone numbers? Well, it's kind of like a TV commercial, right? If you're like, if you have a TV, you're getting a commercial, an ad for a product. It's the same thing with people calling your phone. No, I think it's different because TV, you're putting on a channel, you want to watch the show. Mm -hmm. Your phone is your private means of communication and you're getting a call, which typically is from your family, your friends, from a random business that you have no interest in. And they're like, "Hi, is this Mister?" No. Oh, well, usually nowadays, there's they it, wait. It beeps. Have you guys heard this? No. They no. go like, you go hello, and it goes beep, and then there's a second pause, and it's like, "Hey, how you doing today?" Like they're <laughs> they're transferring your call over <laughs> to whoever is available. Huh. And uh, I can't stand it's, telemarketers. It's, it's kind of yeah. like old school, right? Like think about it, because back in the day, before TV, internet, all that, like people used to sell things over the phone. Hmm. Correct, right? I don't know. I'm guessing. Like, I don't know. I'm guessing that was a more common thing back in the day. So well, maybe, I, maybe telemarketing is just outdated. I don't know about ago. that because back in the day, you used to have these things called party lines where you and like your neighbors would share a telephone line. Hmm. My dad had one of these when he was growing up in Cranford. Why? So it's way to save money. Yeah. It would be like a cost saving thing. You and your neighbor would share you a s- phone number. Whoa. And if what you What year? The 60s. Cool. So, Didn't know that party line. Party lines, pretty yeah, cool. Party lines, look them up. I was gonna say, um, part of this has been resolved through smartphones because, like, my iPhone tells me if, if it's spam yeah. already. I already Potentials. know it's spam. Yeah, um, it's really great that that's happening. Like, I, I don't can't tell you the that. last time I answered a telemarketing call. I don't remember because it's always saying spam risk on my phone. So I just, I just ignore it immediately. Yep. You, you know what company calls me constantly? Who? Guitar Center. Really? I get a call from Guitar Center in Wisconsin about once every other week. Is it like an actual person? Yeah, or? they leave me voice messages. Wh- why? Why are they no calling idea. people? They know it's we shred. Guitar- yeah, they, no you idea. do shred, but like that's I didn't. I never heard a Guitar Center randomly calling people like that. Yep. And you've never been to that location? No, I've never been to Wisconsin. Why don't you answer it? Be- can answer I, can it I play and be like, the message that they answer it me? and be like, "Hey, stop calling me, dude." Well, can I can I play the message they sent me? Right I'd then? love to hear it. Okay. Sure. Uh, the only just put it into your mic. The only call I get is from the New York Blood Center, and I've never even been to the New York Blood Center. Well, I thought we did that one time to get Mets tickets. I, I, remember we did the New York Blood Center because I get texts from them. Not me. You and probably someone else. I, I mean, Danny get, did. Only time I ever gave blood was in high school. I mean, I should probably do that again, right? Well, yeah, and also there's a lot of incentives. Like there's like the thing we did in Jersey City every year where you give blood and you get free Mets tickets. It's cool. Saving lives. Get to go to the baseball game for free. 
Jimmy, are you about to? T- are you about? Jimmy to looks tell- like he's having a seizure yep. over there. He's going to tell a marketer our entire listener base. Jim, this is Clinton over here with Guitar Center. Uh, I wanted to reach out to you to talk to you about some um, Black Friday uh, specials that are, have been extended. Uh, this is for a limited time, so give me a call back at my direct number, which is oh. three eight five. Okay, he gave you his r- direct number. That's really funny, oh, Jimmy. Wait. I've never heard of someone getting like called from like Guitar Center across the country. Yeah, I don't know. They did. Did they have good Black Friday sales though? I have no idea. I nah, they didn't. Maybe I mean, you should have listened next time. You should have called him back at his direct number. We should call him and be like, we should talk oh, to him. We should. <laughs> I'm not that interested. Do you want it from our Google Voice? Yeah, call him really quick, Jimmy. Actually, get the number. Like. Let's call it. See if he answers. If he answers, that would be so funny. I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna prank call this okay, guy right yeah, now. Yeah, okay, yeah, get, get right. Number. Worst okay. case, we cut this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell him I want an Ibanez 1986 <laughs> Ibanez. <laughs> Some <laughs> random guitar. Jimmy, just okay. find the number. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> I need you guys not to laugh. Of course. Yeah. Uh, let's get. You can't going. laugh. What's the number? It is three seven three one. All right. Hold on. And look. what's his name? Quentin. Quentin. <laughs> Josh is searching 1987. <laughs> I've been his electric. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I need like a model number I can give him. Model 58. Okay, That's it. Okay, okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah. Here we go. Guys, don't laugh. I'm gonna. Laugh. I'm, tra- I'm putting <clears throat> my mic away. Please wait while I transfer your call to extension 2958. Oh, uh, he's not gonna be there. I'm gonna leave a voicemail. Tag. It's 740. It's not available. At the <sighs> beat, please leave your name, leave a voicemail. phone number, and a brief message. We will return your call during our normal business hours. Hey, Quinn. Uh, this is Rip. I'm reaching. <laughs> oh, dang it. No. Uh... Your call will be returned during our normal business hours. <laughs> he's getting you, Josh. No, can we cut that out? I want to try again. I want to do it one more time. Yeah, sure. All but right, he's going to get the number now. <laughs> here we go, here we go, Wait, here. can we keep that, Josh? That's so funny. I want to I wanna actually leave him voice no, yeah, we're, Can we keep that and do this Josh. too? That was so funny. Yeah, you I'm broke character. I want to keep that. I got it. All right, here we're we're going to try one more time. Yeah, we're going to get his voicemail again, but it's fine. I just want to I want to mess with this guy's work day tomorrow. Please wait while I transfer your call right. to extension 295. What's my name? What's my name? Rip. Right. Tag. We will return your call during our normal business hours. Is Josh in Hey, Quentin. This is Rip. We met at that show last week. I drove the 87 Firebird. Um, I'm calling today because I'm looking for a specific axe. I want to... I'm sorry. Uh, my allergies are terrible this time of year. I'm looking for a 1986 Ibanez 59 in turquoise green. It's a seven string. Uh, I need that deep bass for a band I'm working on with some of my pals. Um, you give me a call back. My number is 908-67-9999-3. Thank you. <laughs> Josh, we got sick. him so good, guys. <laughs> He's oh. going to be so confused tomorrow when he gets to work. <laughs> when you said axe, we <laughs> lost it. I, was, I need a new axe. Oh, this is so stupid. Oh, I'm not, I've never been good at prank calls because I just break characters so fast. I haven't laughed that like that in Oh, my years. gosh. Oh, my God. I'm looking for a new axe. Do you think, he, do you think he's going to think about the Firebird at all? Maybe. Or Thunderbird. Yeah. What, what I don't I, know what you said. I was laughing too hard. He's going to get your first uh, voicemail, though. He's going to be like, what is, why is this, what's wrong with this guy? Then he's going to play the next one and be like, oh, shoot. He's going to find out it's a he's jersey for number. 87. <laughs> then he's going to stop calling Jimmy. He's like, yeah. shoot, I can't mess with these jersey guys. Oh, my God. That All right. hilarious. Let's go on to the next story here before we uh, waste any more of our sweet listeners' lives. We're not wasting lives. That's true. Do you think um, we should start doing prank calls every week? Because that yes. could be a good addition to this There's podcast. There's so many different 100%. segments we could do. It's so good. Do you guys know any like state employees or, or people that are like um, that work for like a local post office that we could leave a we could prank call them? We can call our local our PO box spot and ask about like if they have a diaper drive going on this month and then they're randomly going to start getting <laughs> diapers. I'd like to call like a post office employee and and just try to like get a calculation on the most ridiculous package ever. You should do it. Well, we could we could talk that through. A Sayerville, New Jersey councilwoman was shot and killed outside of her home this week. This just broke this morning, dude. C- crazy. And the fact that it seems like it was a targeted attack, which makes it even worse. Hmm. Yeah, it, there's something really off about this whole thing. So it says a New Jersey councilwoman, the mother of a young daughter and the leader of her church, was shot and killed in a possible attack 
outside her home. What does it mean by a possible attack? Well, we don't know if it was like someone just randomly shooting, wanting to kill a person, or someone targeting her to attack her. I see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. An incident officials are calling shocking and senseless. Eunice Dwumfor was the first sitting elected official in recent memory who has been shot and killed in office in the state of New Jersey. Governor Phil Murphy told reporters Thursday. Middlesex County Prosecutor Yolanda Sassone told ABC News the councilwoman's political position does not yet appear to have played any role in the homicide. So it seems that that part of the story is speculative, that this is related to her job. Um, But there's a quote here from Governor uh, Phil Murphy. He says, I am stunned by the news of Sayreville Councilwoman Eunice Dwumfor's murder last evening in an act of gun violence. Murphy said her career of public service was just beginning. And by all accounts, she had already built a reputation as a committed member of the borough council who took her responsibility with the utmost diligence and seriousness. <clears throat> um, Dwumfor was inside of her white SUV when she was shot Wednesday night. Official said she sustained multiple gunshot wounds and was pronounced dead at the scene. Police said, Police have no clear motive for the killing. According to law enforcement sources briefed on the investigation, however, detectives have her phone and they are looking at every aspect of her life, personal, professional, religious, to figure out why this happened, sources told ABC News. Just really awful. Uh, Yeah, it doesn't make any sense at all. It's very strange. We're going to have to wait for more information to come out on this because why, why someone would just shoot somebody sitting in their car in Sayreville? Yeah. Of all play, I mean Sayreville's not we, the roughest area in the world. Well, the excavator issue last week, and then now this. Yeah, there's a lot going on in Sayreville right now, but nonetheless, we're gonna have to wait to see why you know why it happened as more information comes out. Hopefully, we get more clear cut information. Not that not that the information would make it any better, but to get some clarity on what the heck actually happened here. Like, why was she randomly shot multiple times? In front mm. of her house, dude. It's very Super strange. dark, yeah. So it wasn't someone ran... I don't know, maybe someone went rogue and was like, I'm just going to go sh- start shooting up the neighborhood. But it looks like he, that per the gunman just targeted her. Uh, is, is the gunman arrested? Or does this say anything about that? Did I miss that? No, I don't think they've caught the actual um, shooter. Oh, it's even worse. Yeah, let me go down to the bottom of the article and read you the statement. It's very, very... Long one. It says anyone with information or surveillance footage of the area is asked to call Detective Rebecca Morales of the Sayreville Police Department at 732-727-4444. Yeah, there's... uh, I think they're going to figure out who it is because everything's on camera nowadays. If you think about this apartment complex, um, they're almost like townhouses looking. I would be surprised if there's not like a ring doorbell or a security camera nearby. But nonetheless, so bizarre, very, very bizarre. And it looks like she had a, um, she was a pretty important member of her community and did a lot of good. So we'll have to wait and see why this happened. It's really sad. Yeah. Prayers up to her family and loved ones. It's <clears throat> awful situation. Absolutely. You, you want to hope her, it wasn't targeted. Her but poor daughter, man. She has a young daughter. It's even worse. Ridiculous. So. All right, moving on to one final story as we prepare for the change of seasons with Puxatani Phil telling us spring is on its way. Or he said the uh, opposite. Uh, yeah, opposite. We are going to get a snowstorm, according to him. Well, with spring being on its way, this summer and spring, we are going to be revisited by an old friend. <laughs> yeah, we're doomed. The lantern fly. So right now we're finding out that every New Jersey county is now under quarantine for lantern flies. Not good. And no one is safe. This is a great moment to plug our lantern fly extermination club t-shirts that we sell on the gardenstate.com. Buy one today. But great. with that, um, last year there were 13 counties included on this list. Now all this 21. year, all 21 counties wow. are on the list. So obviously it's February. We're not seeing lantern flies anywhere because they're there's there's eggs, but they're not flying around, right? Yep. So hibernating. what you're going to see this spring and summer is a lantern fly infestation. Like never before. Like never before. Oh literally. my gosh. We got to get those shirts out. It's going to be bad. 
it's going to be very bad. So uh, the invasive spotted lanternfly continues to expand its reach in the Garden State. The New Jersey Department of Agriculture on Wednesday announced that all 21 counties are now officially part of the spotted lanternfly quarantine zone. Populations have grown and spread, and it's basically everywhere in the state now. Saul Vasunas, a plant pathologist with the Department of Agriculture, told New Jersey 1015. New Jersey isn't seeing adult spotted lantern flies in early February, but egg masses are lurking throughout ew, egg masses are lurking throughout the state on trees and other outdoor surfaces. The egg masses is, sh- should hatch in late April or early May. Um, what I'm wondering is why don't we go burn all the masses? There's, oh, too, there's many. too many. Yeah, how are you going to burn them all? There's millions. Yeah. But like, it's better. Okay, we're on. in big trouble. I'm imagining they lay a bunch of eggs at once, though, right? Yeah. Wouldn't it be easier to burn a bunch of eggs than try to stomp them like we've been trying to do? I mean, none of it's going to work. You well, you can about... burn it, but there's not enough time or people to burn all of them in the state. Yeah, but what I'm saying is we're, they're telling us, hey, step on one when you see it. Wouldn't it be easier if we just told everyone, go in your backyard, look for this and show an image of it, and light that junk on fire? Do you is there an actual image of the eggs? Because yeah. I don't know what they look like. It I don't looks know like about you dirt guys. Dirt on a tree. It looks like there's some mud on a tree, and that's so like, kind of blends it, in. It blends in really well. That's not good. Wow. Here you go. Oh, that's disgusting. Looks like a growth. That's those are lanternfly eggs. Yep. No way. Mm-hmm. So, I might go burn some this week. If you guys want to join me, yeah. I just well, that's th- what the extermination club does as well. We offer burn services. Absolutely. So <clears throat> it's crazy to think that this is an invasive speci- species. And um, if you oh, have, actually, I, I misspoke. I should tell you this before I talk about burning them. It, the, the article did actually say that um, all of our staff are out there scraping egg masses and we're up to 65,000 masses scraped for the season. My point was more, why are we not encouraging people within the state to do the same? Maybe because it's too hard to find. Six, Think about also how high they are up in trees sometimes. Dude, they've scraped 65,000 of these masses. Like how many of these bugs were in a mass? They probably killed a million bugs already. But think about there's probably a million masses. Yeah, maybe. But if there's a million, that they've gotten rid of almost a tenth of them. Yeah, but think about it, bro. There's so many spots that we can't even reach. Think about how many forests and trees there are in this state that you can't even touch. Yeah. They could be anywhere. Like, I feel like the it's too late. Like, I feel like, yes, we could try to stomp them. We could try to burn them. But at the end of the day, bro, they're so invasive, bro. They're, they're ready. They already won. I guess you're right. That's a good point. And I, I don't know what the solution is. I don't know that there is much we can do at this point. Yeah. Well, that's why. Uh, explain a quarantine zone for us, Josh. Yeah. So the idea of a quarantine zone is if you were to see one, like, on your car, actually is. I should just read it doesn't it. mean you have to stay in your house in quarantine. No. No, 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 no. It's just about moving them from county to county, pretty it, much. It's like checking your car, right, before but you leave. What I don't understand about a quarantine zone is if they're in all 21 counties, why is it even a... What are we quarantining? Bringing more into another county, I guess. I don't know. With quarantine designation, residents are required to use a checklist before moving any of the articles listed here. They give you a list. The list features dozens of items, including bicycles, campers, firewood, fencing, lawnmowers, and sandboxes. The checklist includes a spot... For residents to sign indicating they've inspected these items and didn't see the spotted lantern fly or egg masses. The sign checklist is to be kept in the traveling vehicle. Oh, we gotta get some of these. I'm not doing that. <laughs> oh, let's come on. Let's keep a let's keep a checklist, dude. In addition, residents are asked to check their vehicles before leaving the zone, as the spotted lantern fly has the ability to hitchhike on any vehicle for several miles. They're so smart. So they want you to have a clipboard in your car and go. <laughs> No spotted lantern flies. Check. And you sign your name on it and put it in your car. Like I'm, I'm going to print out copies for all you guys and just put it in your cars. Thank you. I got you. Yeah. Safety first. All right. I'm, this is I'm actually, trying to protect my mom's garden. Let's see what this looks These like. These lantern flies have been killing my dad's grapes. Mm-hmm. Unreal. You think I want people transporting them into Union County? No it shot. It says, by signing this checklist, I'm confirming that I've inspected my vehicle and those items I am moving from no the spotted lantern fly quarantine area. Do not see any Yo. egg masses, insects, or anything. <laughs> that it, all jokes aside, that's hilarious. Do they? That's ridiculous. Okay, but I want to know, and Jimmy, maybe you can give us some insight on this. Do they actually think people are going to do this? <sighs> I don't think enough people will do it to make a difference. No, no shot. No, but I mean, like, print this out 
and bring it in their car? I don't know. Like, I, do they have an electronic copy I could, like, you know, digitally sign? Probably no, not. No, they want you to kill trees and print it out. That's true. We are killing trees Whoa. by printing paper. Jimmy with the hot take. Jimbo, I like you. We've we've done a number on Look Jimmy. At this guy. We've done a number Look at on this Jimmy guy. Parks. Listen, my iPad, I could just do it on my iPad and just carry that thing around with me. That's true. True. Kind of like the digital license plates. What if you have just something in your window? That Ugh, digital license plates. We heard about that. that not going to happen. That never came true. It's not going to happen. Yeah. So it's garbage. We also heard that we we're going back to blue license plates, and that never happened. Well, that could still happen, but you know, government. We should do a recap of all the stories that we've done that never came to fruition. Dude, there's probably like over a hundred, Jimmy. That's true. Also, good point. Um, since we're wrapping up the pod, um, do you guys remember one of our first stories ever about the missing couple in the Pine Barrens? Yes. Remember, we were like, "Oh, hopefully in a month we'll get an autopsy and found out how they died." Yeah. Never found anything about it, guys. Did you I've look been, it up? I've been looking the past year. It's been over a year. It happened last January. They miss, the couple went missing in the Pine Barrens. Yeah. And we're like, oh, we'll check out on the month. We'll find out the autopsy because they were found dead. I think they just froze to death. You think that was it? The autopsy wasn't released, though. Why didn't they release the autopsy? How did they freeze to death? They got lost? They got lost in like their own backyard. They were only a few hundred yards from their house. It, it's no. so weird because how do you get lost in your backyard like that? That's so, I don't. I, yeah, it's, it's weird, dude. But yeah, I, I searched their name like weekly and I still don't. I, find I the guess articles it could be easy year. to get lost there, right, Jimmy? It's a super, super thick piece of woods, but you would think. I don't It's all weird because the guy was on a quad and he left his like shotgun with his quad. And that's it's so weird. It's, that it's is really strange. Weird. But yeah, nonetheless, there's so many stories like that, like where we never found a solution or an answer as to why they happened. Yeah. It kind of it kind of kills me. Like, I want to know. Yeah, well, the, the last thing I can find out about it says the police are still waiting on autopsy results. Yeah, that was December last year, like December yeah. of 2021. Yep. How long does it take to get an autopsy back? Like a month. I think at most, right? It's not going to take over a year. Like, they definitely just dropped it. Something weird happened there. <sighs> well, with that, that's our last story of the evening. We should do an update episode. I think it's a great idea, Jimmy. It's pretty clever. And... Um, Keep the state accountable for all the things they want to do. You know? Yeah, absolutely. These lawmakers accountable. Be like, hey, like, what's 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 going on here? Yeah, um, we're the blue plates. By the way, guys, it's February already. We've made it one month into the year 2023. How crazy is I that? I can't believe it's Insane. February, dude. No, and this month is shorter than the last, so it'll be March before yeah. we know it. And then you'll be having your kid. Then I'll be having my kid, and I'll be turning another year older. How many months out of the year, Jimmy, have 28 days? One. All of them. Oh, yeah. All of them. <laughs> got him. I got him. Wow. Got him All so right. good. I think, it's, I think I'm... <laughs> 28 days in every month, Josh. Come on, good bro. Good point. 30, 20, 30 days has September, <laughs> April, April, June, June and, and November. November. All the rest have 31. Except for February. Yeah. I don't know what you guys are saying. Terrible rhyme. They could have made that rhyme so much better. Yeah. Well, with that, thank you all for listening. We will be back next Friday with another episode of New Jersey News. All the New Jersey news you need to hear this week. And make sure to go check out our Polar Plunge page and check out the merch. Call into our mailbag. Mailbag. 908-67-99-993. Yes, sir. And with that. Lady Liberty is ours. She's ours. Claimed it. We claimed Lady Liberty. We're going to get so many TikTok comments this week being like, why is she on your desk to all the people who don't listen to the podcast this far? But yeah, I just well, want to say that. It's fine. I kind of like her up there. I'm going to, oh my gosh. I'm going to bring this to Zach and have him 3D print like copies of this for like all of you guys. My friend 3D prints things. I'm going to have him 3D print Statue of Liberty. I love it. It's amazing. That's a cool project. Just got an idea. Cool. All right, everybody have a good week. We'll see you next Friday. Peace. Later. Bye. You're listening to the Garden State. The Dirty Jurors.